Rise up and shout three hallelujah. Let me hear you. Be seated. God bless you. The short message is what I call obeying the last command. What do I call it? And I will encourage you to listen very well. Whether you are an evangelist, an evangelist to be, as long as you are a child of God, you are a Christian, you must let this message sink into you. Because in the journey of your Christianity, you will need it. Are you with me? The last command given to us was to go into the world and preach the gospel. Jesus said a lot of things during his journey here on earth. By the time we get to Mark chapter 16, Verse 15, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Statistics shows that nearly 57 million people die every year. How many people? 57 million people die every year. And the sad truth is that many of them entered hell because they did not hear the gospel. Are you with me? And imagine how greatly this number could have been reduced if you and I would take up the assignment to talk about this Jesus Christ to one or two people. There are billions of people on the surface of the earth. And we have millions of churches where Christ is being preached. But the problem with us is that we try to do everything within. And the assignment that God has given us is to go out and talk to people about what we are enjoying. And like Mama Rose said, if truly you love somebody, you will keep on talking about him. Am I right? Praise the Lord. If you see a young lady who is in love, without anything, you are not even talking about dating, about boyfriend or anything, she would like to bring the subject in and discuss how amazing this guy is. Why? Because she's in love. Am I right? The same thing applicable. If you are in love with Christ, there is no way you'll be able to keep quiet. Amen? Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I had commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen? The fear in most of us is that, what will I say? How will they take my speech? What am I going to tell them? He has put it there. You don't need to worry. He said, I am with you, even unto the end of the world. As long as you go out there to any part of the world to talk about me, I am with you. Praise the Lord. Where we call this great commission, evangelism, whatever we choose to call it, Jesus said, we should do it. And if you look at the world today, we are bombarded with consequences of sin. Everywhere you look, you see effects of a falling world. Everywhere there is evil. People are destroying lives and people are destroying themselves. And we are here listening to the word of God, 
taking caution without bothering about others. Yes, God is going to use your donations, your money, your support, but the same God says to you that personally you must go out and spread the good news. And somebody says, it is not the good news. You can't call it good news until it has been shared on time. I remember, if those of you have been joining us on our Morning Glory every 6 a.m., most of the time we pray for those who are lost, who have not been in Christ. And we pray that if they don't come to Christ today, some of them will die and they will go to hellfire. Now, it is good to pray, but what are we doing to practically motivate them to come to Christ? And that is where God depends on us. Let me tell you, angels don't preach the gospel. Are you hearing me? Angels don't do what? They don't preach the gospel. They are ministering spirit. Tell them to fight. As long as it's a legal fight, they will fight. Tell them to rescue you. As long as you are in line with God, they will rescue you. The Bible says they hearken to the voice of the word of God. And the Bible says they excel in power. They can do anything you ask them to do as long as it is in line with the word of God. But talk about gospel, they don't preach the gospel. Amen? Praise the Lord. So the Bible calls us sheep. And sheep, we always raise sheep. Am I right? You don't expect a snake to go and raise a sheep. It's not possible. So we that have become sheep in his fold, we are to go out there and bring more to the fold. That is our assignment. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. You may ask yourself, in the past one year, how many have heard the gospel from your mouth? How many people have you given a tract? Let me tell you, we always see evangelism as a very complicated thing. It is not. As long as you can walk, as long as you have a hand, there, is, there are at least eight major types of evangelism. Some of you, you have your phone, you do TikTok, you do all kinds of WhatsApp. Some of you, every day you must change, uh, is it status or DM or whatever, DP, whatever you call it. Those are instruments for evangelism. Those are tools that can be used to spread the gospel. Some of you, you have private businesses, you have offices. I remember when I was in Nigeria, I went to print, I designed something for somebody. And I went to print the plan. And uh, on getting there, I gave the plan to the man, we agreed on the price. And I was surprised this man laid his hand on the machine and prayed before putting my plan inside to print. I was like, what is he praying about? Machine is machine. Then after praying, he now looked at me. He said, young man. I look at him. He said, are you a Christian? I said, yes. He said, which door do you go? I told him. He said, please, please, please. Even if it remains one shirt on your shoulder, remain in Christ. That thing kept on ringing bell in my ears. If it remains only one jacket, remain where? In Christ. He said, you can never be naked. And that is the truth, my dear brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. That is the truth. If you remain in Christ, you can never be naked. Your glory is secured. You are covered, no matter the opposition. Praise the Lord. Evangelism is for everybody. I put something in the bulletin here. I call it big guns or little shots. Big guns or little shots is a question. I was speaking at an open air crusade in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Billy Graham was to speak the next night and arrived a day early. He came incognito and sat on the grass at the rear of the crowd. Because he was wearing a hat and dark glasses, no one recognized him. Directly in front of him sat an elderly gentleman who seemed to be listening intently to my presentation. When I invited people to come forward as an open sign of commitment, Billy decided to do a little personal evangelism. He tapped the man on the shoulder and asked, Would you like to accept Christ? 
I'll be glad to walk down with you if you want to. The old man looked him up and down, thought over for a moment, and then said, Nah, I think I'll just wait till the big gun comes tomorrow night. You do see that? He said he will wait till the big gun comes to the moon. Who, who is the big gun? Billy Graham. And who was tapping him? Billy Graham. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So he said, Billy and I have had several good chuckles over that incident. Unfortunately, it underlines how, in the minds of many people, evangelism is the tax of the big guns, not the little shots. Are you, are you agreeing with me on this one? Many of us believe, oh, evangelism is for the pastors. Oh, we have a group in the church that is doing evangelism. Uh, don't meddle in the affairs. Let me tell you, evangelism is the universal assignment God gave to us. Jesus Christ ordained all of us. We have been ordained. The day we got born again, you were ordained as an evangelist. Are you hearing me? And it's your, your Christianity is not complete. In fact, your Christianity is not certain. If you are not talking about it. I'm serious. If you are truly born again, what happened? You'll be talking. He said, I have eaten the word and I have found joy in it. And it is shut up in my bones. How can I keep quiet? When this is shut up in your bones, you cannot keep quiet. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So like I said, it is not good news until it has been shared. And it cannot be heard or somebody speaks about it. Romans 10. Quickly, let's look at Romans 10. Romans 10, I read from verse 13. Romans 10, 13 to 17. And I want you to listen very well. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be... Are you there? You are not there? Be there, please. Okay, shall we read? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Can you see that? They don't believe in Christ. How would they believe in Christ that they don't know? They have not heard about him. How can they hear unless somebody speaks about it? And is that somebody? You and I. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Verse 16. And how shall they preach except they be sent? How can you preach unless you have been sent? Have you been sent? Answer me now. Have you been sent? Yes. Oh, yes. Every Christian has been sent. Praise the Lord. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For as I said, Lord, who have believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We always quote that verse. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Who is speaking that you are hearing? Who are the people that will hear without somebody speaking? Like I told you, angels don't preach the gospel. It's our responsibility as the children of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So, we have been called to proclaim the good news. The good news of liberation. The good news of deliverance. The good news of knowing God has been accepted by him. The whole world may reject you. There is somebody who cannot reject you. He said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest is in the Lord. Praise the Lord. As long as you are struggling by yourself, you cannot rest. I'm telling you. As long as you are still using your own wisdom, you cannot rest. But when you come to Christ and obey him and bring others, the Bible says your feet are beautiful. Amen. Your feet are what? They are beautiful in the sight of God. You are beautiful. You are the bride. He's waiting for you. And he's saying, I thank you because you did not allow my death on the cross to be in vain. Do you know that Jesus is ever grateful? Do you know that? Yeah, he's grateful for you and I. When we make that small effort to advance the kingdom of God, he's happy. And that is why he sat 
is still sitting right now at the right hand of God, interceding for you and I. Look at one of them. He's going out to evangelize. Daddy, can you wait? Maybe he's going to win more, one more soul. Praise the Lord. I pray your labor will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus. The question is, how can we be motivated to evangelize? The only way is to study the life of Jesus Christ. What is it that motivated him? That made him to lay down his life for us? That while we were yet sinners, he died for us. What was the motivating factor? I want you to listen very well. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. 1 Peter 2, 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Now, look at that. What is he saying here? Evangelism, doing the work of God, is not a piece of cake. Are you with me? If you are not ready to suffer for your belief, you are not yet a true believer. Jesus Christ came. He suffered. He laid down his life. He suffered to be an example for you and I. So that when we begin this journey and we are facing the challenges, we will be reminded that, oh, Christ suffered the same thing. Praise the Lord. So what is it that motivated? Number one, Jesus was motivated by compassion for lost souls. By what? Compassion for lost souls. Let me ask you a question. If you have a child that is going astray, and you know that this child is going astray, and if he continues, he or she will end up in destruction, what will you do? What will you do? Answer me. Will you keep quiet? Will you say, well, it is his life, let him do whatever he pleases? Answer me now. You will do everything to bring him or her back to Christ. Am I right? Yes. You will want that person to correct his ways. For example, you have a child. The earliest time he comes home is 2 a.m. Every day. Will you keep quiet? The first thing you will do maybe to change your luck. So that when he comes the following day, after you have cautioned and cautioned and cautioned, you change the lock, then he will try to open, he cannot open. Maybe that will bring some lessons. You can't keep quiet. Jesus Christ the same way. He looked at us and he saw that all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And he saw that if we should remain in our sin, we will go to hell fire. And it is not a place you want to be. People may mock hell. People may say it is not real. But let me tell you, please, don't go there. Are you hearing me? Don't do what? Don't let anything take you there. Because it is not going to be a laughable matter. Are you sleeping already? Don't sleep. Oh. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 9, 35 and 36. Matthew 9, 35 and 36. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, look at it now. Verse 36. Are you there? But when he saw the multitude, I'm reading Matthew 9, 36 now. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with what? With compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Anyone who is lost who is not a child of God, is like a sheep without shepherd. He can fall into the pit. He can be eaten up by a white lion. He can starve to death. Praise the Lord. So, he was motivated by compassion. Amen? In Matthew 9, 37 and 38, the next verse, Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that we send forth laborers into the harvest. You are the laborers. 
I am one of the laborers. God is calling out upon us today. We should go out there and make disciples. The question is, what are you doing? Are you not moved that some people are heading to destruction? Last Sunday, Pastor Jonathan talked about his own blood brother, right? How many of you listened? He said that, I think he was on drug or whatever. He had to call the police before this boy would destroy himself. Let him be arrested. Many of us will be saying what? Mm, he will change. Mm, this and that. You are allowing that child to go into destruction. They were moved by compassion. And they said, if we allow this boy to continue, he will get to a place of no return. That is compassion. Praise the Lord. That is number one. Amen? You must think about their end. You must not just say, let them live their lives the way they are living it now. It can only lead to destruction. I pray it will not be a portion. Number two is a sense of purpose. What do I call it? Jesus was motivated because he knew his purpose. He came solely to reconcile us to the Father. And let me tell you, your Christianity does not end at the point where you surrender your life to Christ. You are now recruited. The day you surrender your life, you are now recruited into the army of Christ. And what is the purpose of this army? To fight the kingdom of darkness and set the captives free. All those who have been in bondage, who have been suffering in the hands and the oppression of Satan, it is your responsibility as one of the members of the army of God to bring them back to the fold. Sense of purpose. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. It is very, very important. Jesus Christ was talking to that woman at the pool, at the, uh, uh, at the well, in John 4, 27. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? And Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of my Father. It's a sense of purpose. Amen? Okay, let me ask you this question. Why are you alive? Why are you still living? Now, when your time is up and you are dead, what are you going to take with you? Are you with me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? What are you going to take with you? Your clothes will be donated to charity. Your shoes will be given out. They become what? Junk. Things you bought that you cherish, they become what? Junk. Amen? And if you have a house that you share it so much, your children will sell the house. You don't believe me? Don't die yet, oh, because they will sell the house. Are you with me? They don't want to live in the environment you are in now. The only thing that you will carry with you is what have I done with Christ? That is the only thing that you will present before God. This is what I did. With Christ. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you. Let's have that sense of purpose. People are dying. Thank God your children are doing well. Thank God they have good jobs. They have careers. Do they have Christ? Start from your home. Are you with me? Are you here? Yes. Do they know Christ? Are they serving God? You are in church today. Where are your children? Where are they? It's a cause for concern. It calls for concern. And I pray God will grant us this sense of purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ says, he said in Luke nineteen ten, he said, for the son of man is come to seek and to save the lost. You seek and to save. That is his purpose. His sense of purpose. He said, I have not come to reconcile you to each other. He said, children will turn against their parents, parents will turn against, they will have longer heads, but I have come that I will reconcile you to Christ. I have come to seek. That is a seeking before you can save. If you don't seek, 
you cannot save. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. If you don't seek, you cannot save. Now, let me ask you another question. Where you walk, do they know you are a Christian? I'm not talking of you belong to a denomination or you are a church goer. Do they know you as a Christian? Are you an enviable Christian? Are you somebody they can emulate? When you speak, can they say, yes, a child of God is talking? That is part of evangelism. They must know who you are. Praise the Lord. I remember where I used to walk. There was a time, we call it a refreshing time. We would have snacks, then we would start asking trivias and all that just to relax because it involves a lot of uh, brain work. So and they were asking a series of questions. And they now said, who can tell us if there is a person here, if it's not a computer engineer, if it's not in this industry, where would he be? And they said, who is the person? And somebody said, Joseph. Okay. They said, Joseph. Where will he be? Somebody said, he will be in the church. They said, he will be a pastor. Praise the Lord. They must know who you are. Are you with me? If you are hiding yourself, then you are not proud of your Christianity. Many, many years ago, before I got married, I went to see my wife, who was my girlfriend then, in her office. Downtown Lagos, she was, she was working in a bank. And that was the day the Ogboni people, how many of us know Ogboni? I don't know what they call it in Igbo land. Ogboni is a secret court. That was the day, the time they were parading in the downtown streets of Lagos. Come and see executive directors of companies. Come and see beautiful women, market women, rich people. And they put on their regalia like this. And they were, let me see, if I'm not exaggerating, the queue will be like almost two miles. And they will say, they will, somebody will shout, I know what they say, but I don't want to see it, see it I'm on the pulpit. They will say, they will say it, somebody will carry it forward, you will carry it, they will receive it, they will see, until you get to that end, they will return it. In their life, they were not hiding. They were not hiding. I remember her boss. Incidentally, the woman is called Mrs. Popola. <laughs> you remember? She was one of them. And that day she didn't come to office. She put on her regalia celebrating their secret court. And here we are. Ordinary trance to hold and let people know I am a child of God. We don't want to do it. Are you think angels will go and fight? No, it is our responsibility. When you step out, God will provide the angels who will guide you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you till the end of the earth. That is, wherever you go on the surface of the earth, my presence is with you as long as you are bearing the good news. Don't be afraid of them. It's nothing but the intimidation of the enemy. They were proud of themselves. Praise the Lord. We should be proud of our Christianity. We should have that sense of purpose. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Number three, the love of the Father. The love of the Father. Jesus Christ said, as the Father loved me, so have I loved you. That is why I laid down my life for you. Do you love the Father? One of the ways to demonstrate that you love the Father is to be ready to sacrifice everything you can to bring somebody to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I know some of you must have visited Habalis before. And if you think, if you consider the Habalis to be very hot, what happened? You don't want to tell me. You will introduce your friend. You don't believe me. You don't believe me. You will do what? Introduce your friend. Oh, is this what you are going through? I know of a man. Mm, it will only cost you your ticket. Mm. Eh, all this Christianity, eh, you better take care of yourself. Because you so much believe in that man. 
the same thing applicable. If you truly love Christ and you believe him as your personal Lord and Savior, you do know the meaning of Savior? Do you know the meaning of Savior? That means somebody who can rescue you when you are in trouble. It's only God that can rescue you when you are in trouble. And so, whenever anybody is in trouble, what happens? You point that person to the Savior. That is your responsibility. Angels will not do that. I say it again. It's our duty. Praise the Lord. The love of the Father motivated Christ. Praise the Lord. In John 17, 26, say, And I have declared unto them thy name, and we declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Did you see that? I have declared your name, that I love you, and that love with which you love me, I cannot keep it to myself. I must share it with them, so that that same love will be in them. And when that love is in them, can they keep quiet? No! They will tell another person about that love. Praise the Lord. That is how we have been ordained to spread the gospel. And I pray we will not fail. Amen. Jesus Christ called Peter. He said, lovest thou me? Ah, Peter said, you know that I love you. He said, feed my sheep. That is his demo. He, he asked the second time. The third time, Peter was even angry. Ah, why are you doubting my love? <laughs> I know what I'm saying. No. Peter, because before we talk now, you say, go and, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, I go out fishing. You will now say you are going back to your ship. That is why I'm telling you, I'm repeating it. Do you love me? Yes, Father, I love you. Do you love me? I say, I love you. Do you love me? Ah, you know that I love you now. I say, feed them. That is the only way you can demonstrate your love. All this acrobat, that crap you are playing is not for me. The only way you can demonstrate that you love me is to do what? Evangelize. You can sing in the choir. You can be a member of the prayer world. Or you can be a preacher like myself. Unless you get to the level of bringing Christ to, I mean, people to Christ. You have not demonstrated the love of Christ. Amen. What is music? What is prayer? When the whole world is perishing. Are you sleeping already? God will wake you up. In the name of Jesus. Number four. The terror of the Lord. I want you to listen to this one very well. I don't mind closing it here. The terror of the Lord. Motivated Jesus Christ. I know that people call it the wrath of God. Or the anger of God. <laughs> I pray God will not be angry with us. I say God will not be angry with you. I pray you will not experience the anger of God. God is loving and caring. But when God gets angry, nobody can beg him. Amen. Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Look at what the Bible says here. Matthew 10, 28. Matthew 10, 28. Matthew 10, 28. What does he say? Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill what? The soul. But rather fear him, which is able to do what? Destroy both soul and the body where? Fear that. Don't fear those who can kill. Yeah, they can kill. Your soul is intact. But fear God who is able to destroy the body and the soul in hell. Oh, God is too nice. He can't take people to hell. It is a lie. Oh. We are in the time of grace. As long as you are alive, you have the opportunity of accepting him or rejecting him. You have the opportunity of obeying him. A time is coming. It will be too late. That is why the Bible says seek first the kingdom of God. And that is why the Bible also says, seek him why he's near. Call upon him why he may still be found. Amen. Praise the Lord. He warned of the judgment to come. In 2 Corinthians 5 11. 2 Corinthians 5 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing what? 
Can you give us 2 Corinthians 5.11, please? Knowing what? Therefore, the terror of the Lord will do what? We persuade men. Because we know the danger of experiencing the terror of God. We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Yes, we have preached the gospel. We are still preaching. Why we keep on preaching? We know the terror of God. Until you come to the true knowledge of Christ, you cannot avoid, you cannot escape the terror of God. Amen? And there's a serious reminder in 2 Peter chapter 2. This is a serious reminder in 2 Peter chapter 2 from verse 4. Are you there? Are you there? 2 Peter 2, 4. What does it say? For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but did what? Cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Verse 5. And spare not the old world. Remember the old world in the time of Noah. God didn't spare them all because of their sin. But save Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. If God did not spare these people. Verse 6. And if God, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into what? Into ashes. Condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that ever should live ungodly. Did you see that? God did not spare them all. Amen. He didn't spare the, the angels. He reserved them on the day of judgment. He didn't spare the whole world. He, repaired, he brought flood. Now he turned Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes. Verse 7. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Verse 8. For that righteous man dwelling among them in sin and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with the unlawful day. You remember uh, Lot? Do you remember that God did not account anybody's blood unto him? Do you remember? You read your Bible very well. God did not blame Lot for Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't blame them. Praise the Lord. So, you have to be up and doing. It's unfortunate that Lord could not even influence his son-in-laws. It's a tragedy. Are you with me? Shall we go on verse 9? Verse 9, what does it say? The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. And to reserve who? The unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the loss of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self will They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Amen? God is not going to spare the sinner on the final day. Then there is a serious warning in 2 Thessalonians. Quickly, 2 Thessalonians. I'm bringing this up so that you can understand. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 to 10. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Did you see that? God is coming to do what? To take vengeance on those that know him not. And that to be not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Now, what is your testimony among your friends? What are, your tes what are you telling them? Yes, tell them. If they believe, fine. If they don't believe, you can't force them. But keep it quiet. It's your fault. Are you with me? And then the Bible says in Revelation 20 that the day of judgment is inevitable. Revelation 20 from verse 11. And I saw a great white throne. 
and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was far no place for them. And I saw the dead. Did you see that? Small and great stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Did you see that? According to what? All of us, we are working right now. Amen? And there is a book where our deeds are being written. Whether you are hiding, whether it is known, whether it is not known, your deeds are written in that book. And in verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The terror of God is real. It's coming. How will you feel if perhaps you make heaven and your loved ones are in hell fire? How will you feel if you are there and your children are not there? How will you feel if you are there and your parents are not there? How will you feel if you are there and your friends are not there? How will you feel coming to church and ending up in hell? To be a tragedy, Satan will be making mockery. Maybe you go to church every Sunday. I know your church, your foundation ministries. Oh, Redeem Church. Oh, MFM. I know all of you. Why are you here now? It will not be a portion. It will not be a portion. It will not be my portion. Praise the Lord. And then Jesus endured because of the joy that was set before him. He endured because of what? The joy. The Bible says we will wear a crown of glory. And they told us your crown will be according to the number of souls you have won. Some will wear empty crown because they kept quiet. And some will wear crowns with golden decorations because they came out to talk about Christ. And the Bible says, when we appear before Jesus, we'll be so excited and be so grateful, we will lay down our crown and celebrate him for dying for us. I pray you will not miss it. I pray I will not miss it. In the name of Jesus. What a beautiful day it will be. Amen. When we were young, those of us who grew up in the villages, there were festivals that we always look forward to. Am I right? Answer me now. Some of you from Ondo, Ogun is your festival. Is that right? You eat dog. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be looking forward to it. There is a festival in my village. It's a market festival. And that day, when we were young, we couldn't, I couldn't sleep. A day to that market day, I will not be able to sleep. I'll be waking up, waking up. Waking up, I close my eyes, I wake up, I, I will look outside. Ah, he left him money. It's not daybreak yet. Because I have saved some coins that I can spend freely. Nobody will ask me, how did you spend it? And on that day, they will still give us money to go to the market. That is the day you will eat rice with meat and egg in your woe. Amen? Amen? Then that is the day you will buy Toronto ball. How many of you know of Toronto? Ah, you don't know that ball they call Toronto. Okay, what of Felele? Ah, you don't know. Those are the things you buy. Then you can also buy this small flute. Or there is a balloon that comes with some sand. When you blow it, the And you'll be looking forward to it because it will be a wonderful day. Now, as a young person, you, we were always saving towards that day. Amen? In the day you appear before God, what have you saved to celebrate him? How many souls have you won to celebrate him? 
This is food for thought. I presented this before you today. And I've given you the opportunity. How many of you received the, this paper? Yes, I will encourage you. Sign up. Let me tell you. If you look at this other page where you are going to fail, I ask how often can you be available for evangelism? In a month. Once, twice, thrice, weekly. I'm only available online. I'm available anytime there is a meeting. These are flexible things. I expect everybody to sign up. I expect all of you to sign up. And we will organize a short training for you. We provide you with the resources. If you are available online, there are online resources we are going to give you to spread the word. It is important. Your Christianity is not complete until you become an evangelist. You have been ordained the day you are born. The day you became a born again Christian, you became an evangelist. It's a universal assignment. I pray you will not fail. In the name of Jesus, as you rise up. I want you to talk to the Lord. Our time is gone. Talk to the Lord. Pray that God will open your eyes. He said the harvest is plenteous. The harvest is ripe. But few are the laborers. Pray that God will open your eyes to see the field where he wants you to operate from. Close your eyes. Talk to the Lord. This is a, this is a very important moment in your life. It's a very important moment in your life where God is giving you opportunity to advance the kingdom of God. Ask God to show you, Father Lord, open my eyes. Let me see that field where you want me to operate from in the name of Jesus. Yes, you said the harvest is plenteous. Where is the field where you want me to bring in the harvest? Who are the people I need to talk to? Who are the people I need to contact? Please, Lord, open my eyes. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord Almighty. Ask him to show you your field. The area of your operation. Yes. Don't wait till you are replaced with stone. I pray it will not be your portion. I pray you will not be replaced. In the name of Jesus. Say, O oh Lord, my Father. Say, O oh Lord, my Father. Remove every form of hindrance. From serving you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, remove it. Every form of hindrance, anything whatsoever that will hinder me from serving you, O oh Lord, remove it. O oh Lord, remove it. King of glory, Lord of Lord, I am that I am. Remove it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Our Lord, our God, we thank you. Again, we bless your holy name. For you are faithful. You are wonderful. There is none like unto you. You are the El Shaddai. We have heard the word this morning. Let it prosper in our lives. Lord, we pray, use every office, every location that we may be in as a field for us to bring in the harvest. In the name of Jesus. Give us that grace and the strength to evangelize and bring more souls to the kingdom. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed.